Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. It's a morning session. Look how beautiful it is outside, my lord. We ain't going out there, though. We're staying in here, over there. See that? Oh, uh, we kind of have some, like, foliage. Kind of reminds you of, uh, what's out there. Well, I think it's time we get down to it, so let's go. Yeah, we got some stuff to do today. I'm pretty excited to go into the Bach. I think I'm gonna do something kind of radical, and I'm going to start with the Presto, and I'm gonna try to make great strides in that today. I've been kind of breaking things up. I've been doing like Adagio Fugue, Siciliana Presto, and that's kind of how I'm thinking about these. So the first half will probably be mostly focused on the Siciliana Presto, and then I still want to focus on the Adagio Fugue in this half as well. So it'll kind of be like a double. And I really need to put in considerable work into the Sore Mozart variation, so I'm gonna do that. In the second half, I'm gonna try to really gas out on the Bach in the beginning. I really want to finish that Bach so I can move on to a new one. I have another Sonata lined up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, but that pretty much covers all that. We'll probably watch the Bach video in the middle. Um, the Julian Bream one's getting pretty interesting, huh? That's pretty fun. But you know, we don't want to burn out on it. Uh, which, speaking of that, I don't actually have a question today. So I want to make kind of a new segment for when this happens. This is going to be story time. I need to think of some weird thing to say when it's story time. Let me try to think of one. I got a new story time comment today, so let's see what they have to say. Is that good? I might change it. This is from Anu Man. Hey! How's it going? Hope you're doing well. You're not doing too well based on this though. You start off, Dear Cameron. Love that. Very formal. Feels like a letter. You seem to be a big fan of Julian Bream. <laughs> Well, I think a lot of us are big fans of Julian Bream. Hopefully you don't sully his name at all. Well, I'm not. Ooh, okay. <laughs> In fact, thanks to Mr. Bream, I heard the worst concert I ever went to. Man, that sucks. Some 40 years ago. What? <laughs> this is like... Alright, flashback sequence. Mr. Bream played a solo concert in my part of the world. I respect that. In my part of the world. Yeah, dude, don't give away where you are. I'm not giving away where I am either. I'm like, in my country, in my part of the world. And as a guitar fan, of course, I got myself a ticket. Of course, Julian Bream's playing in your part of the world. Imagine a rather big concert hall. 1,500 visitors, sold out, huge stage, on it, a single man with a classical guitar, unamplified, a single man, but what a man he was. I was sitting in the second to last row and didn't hear a thing. Oh man, yeah, 1,500 people. That was like the documentary we watched uh, yesterday with that guy playing for the Metallica crowd. Like, surely they couldn't hear either. Even the softest coughing in the audience, even my own breathing, was way louder than Mr. Bream's playing. It was impossible not to come to the conclusion that classical guitarists are weird. It took you that long to figure it out? I don't even have to go to a Julian Broom concert to know that one. I just have to be in my head. And those purists in the audience who preferred hearing next to nothing over listening to an amplified sound, for me, they were, let's say, suspicious. Yeah, you know, and I did have a rant on that, how I hate amplified classical instruments, and I, like, I don't hate amplified instruments in general, but especially if you're playing classical, I don't like it. Because that's where the tone comes from, it comes from the acoustic instrument, and I feel like you lose something once you amplify it. Certain frequencies that were supposed to be a certain volume by the luthier are now louder and stuff. I don't like that. So, I have held that opinion here. Classical guitarists are kind of weird. Yeah, maybe so. Like, I'm the kind of guy, when I go out, because I do occasionally go out, like, to the clubs or the bars, my number one complaint always is, why is it so loud in here, guys? Like, I can't hear anything. I'm the guy walking around like this. I can't handle it. And you know what? I'm also one of the few musicians that I know who has zero hearing damage, too. I've done that test where if you get, like, a frequency, like a sine wave frequency generator, you should be able to hear up to 20,000 hertz if you're, like, a teenager, and it kind of diminishes as you age. Like, someone my age should be able to hear, like, 18,000. A lot of my friends, at, like, 13,000, they stop being able to hear it. That's really, really, like, you just can't hear that. <laughs> like, there's, there's just so much sound that you can't hear. I can hear almost double the sound that you can hear. So, you know, like, take care of your ears. Get some earplugs, something that I recommend. Get a pair of uh, noise-canceling earbuds. Don't even listen to anything with them. Just walk around in your daily life with them in. That, or just wear regular earplugs. That's generally a good idea. And man, you know what I love about classical guitar? I can play it for hours and my ears don't hurt. My ears have never hurt from playing too much classical guitar. They have hurt from playing piano. They have hurt from playing flute. They have hurt from playing electric guitar. So, 
That's nice. Okay, so after all this. Well, time went by. Classical guitarists hardly ever reach such an audience anymore. But my critical opinion towards them never changed. <laughs> I'm sorry even holding this, man. Even though I started playing a little classical guitar myself. Dude, dabbling in the dark arts I see. Ooh, that's kind of naughty, dude. You're engaging in suspicious behavior right now. But almost never play without my amplifier. So sorry. It's okay, man. I don't take any of that personally, and I think it's really funny, actually. You always play classical guitar with an amplifier? I feel like that's kind of suspicious. I mean, I'm not judging you or anything, but I certainly wouldn't do that. I assume that you have like a plug-in classical, because I wouldn't want to like set a mic up every time I practice. Oh, wait. <laughs> It seems like there's a lot of people that Julian Bream and John Williams have pissed off over the years. I'm happy that this channel is serving as sort of an outlet for those people to share their story, and then we can all hear about it in the chair, so that's kind of fun. Thank you for sharing your story, that was very fun and interesting. Alright, well, I think we can pretty much wrap it up there. So, let's go ahead and get to practicing, shall we? It feels good to sit in this chair, knowing that I have all this Bach ahead of me. There's nothing quite like practicing Bach, you know? So, if you're not already, I encourage you all to go practice some Bach. I'm gonna warm up with the Fugue, uh, to a metronome, slow practice. I'm gonna play everything relatively light, just to get my finger wingers going. All right, well, I will see you on the other side. I've been hammering, <laughs> I've been hammering this Bach. hammering has been hammering. It's time for me to play what I've been working on, so come on over. Well, I'm actually not gonna play what I've been working on, but I'm happy to say that I pretty much have the first page of the Presto all at the same speed. So I guess tomorrow I will start going into the second page because I am pretty comfy with all that. I was having kind of a hard time focusing in the beginning because maybe there's like too much CO2 in this apartment. I'm pretty sure the ventilation's kind of bad so I can get a little foggy if I stay in here too long. But I had to close it because I heard some person screaming outside, which is pretty typical. But I, I feel a bit better now. I'm sure it's just psychological. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to play the Siciliana for you. I'm just going to try to have fun with it. You'll see. Thank you. 
with the Siciliana. It's coming along. There's some stuff that still needs to be worked out. Obviously, I need to memorize it. Yeah, all right, pretty cool. So we're done with that. Take a little bit of a break and maybe do something else. But, I mean, can we honestly say that we've gotten our fill of Bach quite yet? Can we really say that? God, the first freaking comment on this. I love to hear Bach praised. His music calms and harmonizes my brainwaves. Uh, yeah, sure, man. Oh my god, why did I go into this comment section? Google spat temporal brain dynamics during recognition of the music of Bach. Remarkably, the recognition of Bach's original music ignited a widespread music processing brain network comprised primarily of auditory cortex, superior temporal gyrus, insula, frontal, or Helium? I, I have no idea what I'm saying. I don't know any of this. Furthermore, both activity and connectivity increased over time following the evolution of unfolding Bach's original patterns. Uh, no it didn't. I'm not a scientist, but I can tell you that's not true. It's just music, people. It's just music. It's not magic. Don't forget that. All right. Bach just got out of prison. What's the next stop gonna be? Bach felt freer than ever, and his music had also been set free. For the first time, he was being paid to write compositions that didn't have to be about anything religious or otherwise. Hmm. After Bach's death in the 19th century, this kind of music was named absolute music. Pull out the blank stop. Absolute music. We kind of talked about this with the uh, context in music. So music with no story, basically. It's just music for the sake of music. Actually, such pieces are a gift to the imagination because they can be about whatever we want them to be. I mean, any piece can be like that, though, if you just don't look at the story. <laughs> I don't know, was his other music about something? This sounds a lot like his other music. Uh. Don't give me imagery right now. This is about nothing. Yeah, this is who listens to it, this old music. This song is about a flower now. Oh, it's kind of a boring chapter, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, dude, bask in the glory of Bach. He looked like his uh, neural pathways were getting rearranged, you know what I'm saying? Looks like his brain waves were getting harmonized over there. It's okay. What is this? This is so rich with story now. So many different timelines, I have no idea what's even happening. There's too much story in this. What do you think it's about? It's about nothing, that's what you just said. No living being. No living being. Processed food for every single meal of their life. You know, maybe some of them should. I eat processed food for like every meal of my life. I'm perpetually ill because I eat at least one Beyond Burger every day. I eat Quest chips, that's like as processed as they get. Bok bars, I had two of them today. I stopped filming them because I feel like it's annoying when I'm eating. And there's also just too much to talk about now. I don't want to eat while I film. Processed food ain't all bad. The Departed. Oh, uh, uh, you pushed it back in. You pushed it back in. It's not gonna work. 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 And speaking of that, it's about time for me to get back to work. I need to work on the sore Mozart variations desperately. Uh, yeah, I'll see you there. Well, you know, that Bach documentary is starting to slow down a bit again. I need to work on my sore Mozart, so I'm going to do that. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you there. <laughs> So I've just been working on the Sore Mozart Variations, and I think I actually identified some issues that's been holding me back for a while. With a lot of this piece, it's very fast, right? Like, and you, you kind of have to move your hand a good bit. I've been a little too obsessed with, like, making sure every single note comes out. And, like, setting up for the next note. Like, and really, like, making sure all that is, like, ready to go. Like, when I have to go to that bar chord. I'm finding it's actually coming out cleaner if I move with kind of more momentum. I'm just focusing on keeping a lighter touch for that fast stuff. It's hard to explain, but I felt like a change in my playing where it, I think I'm just keeping my touch a little bit lighter than I was before. I'm 
not being very detailed with it, but I worked on that one. And it's that stuff here that gives me trouble. So that's what I got going on. I know I barely explained any of that, and honestly it's because I can't really articulate it that well, but there was like a shift in my brain with the thinking of how my left hand should move over that. Yeah, that piece is hard. It's a hard one. <laughs> I'm working on it though. Give it a little bit of time. All right, I think it's been long enough, so we can pretty much wrap this one up here. Let's do it. Well, if you enjoyed that, and if you made it this far, you know, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, all that stuff. And if you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave a comment and ask me something, or you can just say hi, you can comment anything like that. I need to get my day started because it's 1.10 right now. All right, <laughs> I'll see you tonight.